Fessy, final week of spring ball. How do you feel things have progressed to this point so far? Really good. I, uh, <clears throat> you know, we had a, a string of probably eight, nine practices in a row where progressively we just got better every single week. And then, you know, we kind of hit a little lull and, and maybe one or two practices where it's not, you're not on the trajectory you were on, but, you know, you regroup and you bounce back. And the guys have shown maturity and uh, we've gotten, we've gotten a lot better, I feel, over the, um, over the course of spring. A lot of new guys, um, a lot of competition. We're trying to see guys have executed, made plays. And so uh, overall, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's been a lot of good plays made and I think we're on the right track. You got one of the more experienced units overall, though, with the amount of bodies coming back. How does that help you, if, if at all? Yeah, it just it, it allows me to really focus on like the nuances of our playbook. You know, a lot of the times, like last year, even though they were experienced players and transfers in terms of, of Darius and, and uh, Keelan, um, our playbook was still new. And so now that they know it and that's kind of already crystallized, we can focus on very specific things of the playbook. Hey, this is this is the you know, the technique we want you to use in this exact route versus this coverage, you know, focus on these splits, on these alignments. We can get a lot more deliberate um, on the playbook as opposed to just crossing your fingers and saying, oh, I hope you know the play. You know what I mean? And so uh, I can feel that this, these guys have taken a huge jump. They know the playbook really well. I can line any of up anywhere and I'm confident they'll know what to do. With the quarterbacks, obviously, that battle ongoing, how does that affect your guys, if at all, on that, on that side of things? Uh, it doesn't. It just really is. It, it just makes us lock, locked in getting used to, to two different guys. It forces them to, they can't get comfortable with one. They've got to, you know, if the ball comes out different or uh, has a different trajectory or speed to it, um, they just got to get used to that. And we've we've had that in the past. You know, you think about between um, Jaron, Jaron Hall, Zach Wilson, and Baylor Romney, you know, for a couple of years, it was just kind of circulating, and you got to get used to those those competitions and those battles. And I think the guys have done a good job with that. It seems like every time I, I turn around when we when we come in here, JoJo Phillips is going along and making some big play. Just what has he done in the last not even a year, nine, ten, eleven months? Yeah. To really just be as explosive as he's been this spring. Yeah. The two biggest things that come to mind, and number one is physically, his body. He's he's. He's put on some the right type of mass, which has allowed him to just be even faster. He's such a fluid route runner, but he's gotten faster and stronger. He plays with strength. You know, you think about guys like Puka, like no one could hold him. He, he was always, he's just such a strong route runner. JoJo's got elements of that. He's gotten stronger and he used to not have that. And then the other thing is just that he's settling in with the playbook. He's uh, playing with a lot more confidence. He knows what to do. He knows all the little nuances of the position and the playbook. And uh, he still obviously has a ton of room to grow, but I think what you're seeing is a foreshadowing of, of what he can do in this offense and making big plays. Is, is part of that redshirt year that he just went through, does it involve a lot of like working with Dan and the nutrition group and, and maybe spending a little bit of extra time in the weight room, that kind of thing, kind of getting physically ready? Like yeah, physically, mentally ready, but also just combined with the fact that um, as you as you look at the years left that my guys have, you know, you know, I got to be strategic on spacing it out. We can't be so heavy senior group and a bunch of young guys. And so we had five veteran guys last year. I mean, Parker was the youngest of that group, but they're all returning. And so last year he was he was watching those guys. And so even though he physically could have gone in more, um, I think it was important for him to develop physically and to learn the playbook. And then we sprinkle him in there. Obviously, he gets a touchdown, um, you know, down here, here at the home game and, and uh, against Iowa State. Um, so he showed flashes, but the main motive was just to let him watch and learn from guys who've, who've been more experienced and also just get bigger and stronger. Yes, I'm sorry if you've been asked, but when Keanu Hill, when they came to you and said, we're going to make him a tight end, what was your reaction? Yeah, it was a collaborative deal. That was a deal where we, you know, kind of, um, you know, exit interviews. It was basically like, hey, if you want to play receiver, like, and you're locked in, there's no ifs, ands, ands and buts, like, I don't know if we can get aligned in what those goals are, but if, if you want to be here at BYU, tight end may be the best move. And it was a, like I said, it was a collaborative effort. It wasn't a surprise. It was something that we involved him and his family with, and everyone got on the same page. And he's he was great with it. He's all in, and the guys looked phenomenal. When I was about Darius, what's the would you be able to play this year? We finally got that word back. What's he looked like so far in your opinion? Man, he's he's had you know, arguably the best spring ball, you know, of the guys in the room. Um, you know, despite you see him around here with the knee brace, it's just precautionary, but he's fully healthy. He's ready to roll. He's made some great catches. He's playing super physical. Um, I think, you know, if he stays healthy and stays on the right track, he's going to be making, I think, a lot more plays than we saw from him last year. Where would you rank this receiving core? I know it's early spring. Yeah. As far as the ones you've had, 
Yeah, for, for, in terms of depth, it's I feel it's the best I've ever had. You know, there's always you know a couple receivers here and there, um, but in terms of just the the quality of depth and how many guys I can roll through, especially as you factor in the incoming freshmen, you know we're about to get that have not joined us. Obviously, Dominique McKenzie's an early enrollee from coming off his mission, graduating high school early. But you think about Tainaku and Cody Hagen, for example, to add to the to the six kind of guys who are already experienced, that, that there's a lot of depth there. And so, like you said, it's early. We'll see how some of those guys, um, you know, how, how they flourish and, and grow into this offense. But I'm excited for the group. Uh, Aaron's talked about retaining such a big deal. Did you have to work to retain any of these guys, or were they pretty much yeah. on board and going to stay? I, in this day and age, you kind of do have to work to retain all of them. I mean, it's it's so it's so liquid, man. This transfer portal thing's crazy. So even if you even if I don't get word that someone's looking to transfer, you know it's a real thing. Um, the guys, it's just part of the culture now. Guys are, you know, evaluating. Man, am I happy here? What's out there? Is the grass always greener? That's a process any legitimate player is going to go through every year. So we have to guard it. And, you know, our most important recruiting job has become our own guys now. And so they were they were all great right after the season. Exit interviews, having real talks, what they need to improve on, and just kind of getting a feel if any of them are looking to leave. But uh, no doubt, we have to fight to retain these guys every year. Cool. All right. Appreciate you guys.